Good evening, Miss Julie here. We are on our last chapter of Black Beauty, chapter 49, called My Last Home. One day during the summer, the groom cleaned and dressed me with such extraordinary care that I thought some new change must be at hand. He trimmed my fetlocks and legs and passed the tar brush over my hoofs and even parted my forelock. I think the harness had an extra polish. Willie seemed half anxious, half merry as he got into the chase with his grandfather. If the ladies take to him, said the old gentleman, they'll be suited and he'll be suited. We can but try. At the distance, a mile or two from the village, came a pretty low house with a lawn and shrubbery at the front and a drive up to the door. Willie rang the bell and asked if Miss Bloomfield or Miss Ellen was at home. Yes, they were. So Willie stayed with me. Mr. Thoroughgood went into the house. In about 10 minutes, he returned, followed by three ladies. One tall, pale lady wrapped in a white shawl leaned on a younger lady with dark eyes and a merry face. The other, a very stately looking person, was Miss Bloomfield. They all came, looked at me and asked questions. The younger lady, that was Miss Ellen, took to me very much. She said she was sure she would like me. I had such a good face. The tall pale lady said that she should always be nervous in riding behind a horse that had once been down, as I might come down again. And if I did, she should never get over the fright. You see, ladies, said Miss, Mr. Thoroughgood, many first-rate horses have had their knees broken through the carelessness of their drivers without any fault of their own, and from what I can see of this horse, I should say that is his case. But of course, I do not wish to influence you. If you incline, you can have him on trial, and then your coachman will see what he thinks of him. You have always been such a good advisor to us about our horses, said the stately lady that your recommendation would go a long way with me. And if my sister Lamina sees no objection, then we will accept your offer of a trial with thanks. It was then arranged that I should be sent for the next day. In the morning, a smart looking young man came for me. At first he looked pleased, but when he saw my knees, he said in a disappointed voice, I didn't think, sir, that you would have recommended my ladies a blemished horse like that. Handsome is that handsome does, my master. You are only taking him on trial, and I am sure you will do fairly by him, young man. If he is not as safe as any horse you ever drove, send him back. I was led home, placed in a comfortable stable, fed, and left to myself. The next day, when my groom was cleaning my face, he said, That is just like the star that Black Beauty had. He's much the same height, too. I wonder where he is now. A little further on, he came to the place in my neck where I was bled and where a little knot was left in the skin. He almost started and began to look me over carefully, talking to himself. White star on the forehead, one white foot on the off side. This little knot is just in that place. And then looking at the middle of my back, and as I am alive, there is that little patch of white hair that John used to call Beauty's Three Penny Bit. It must be Black Beauty. Why, Beauty, Beauty, do you know me? Little Joe Green that almost killed you? And he began patting and patting me as if he was quite overjoyed. I could not say that I remembered him, for now he was a fine grown young fellow with black whiskers and a man's face, but I was sure he knew me, and that was Joe Green, and I was very glad. I put my nose up to him and tried to say that we were friends. I never saw a man so pleased. Give you a fair trial. I should think so indeed. I wonder who the rascal was that broke your knees, my old beauty. You must have been badly served out somewhere. Well, well, it won't be my fault if you haven't good times of it now. I wish John Manley were here to see you. In the afternoon, I was put into a low park chair and brought to the door. Miss Ellen was going to try me and Green went with her. I soon found that she was a good driver and she seemed pleased with my paces. I heard Joe telling her about me, that he was quite sure I was Squire Gordon's old black beauty. When he returned, the other sisters came out to hear how I behaved myself. 
She told them what she had just heard and said, I shall certainly write to Mrs. Gordon and tell her that her favorite horse has come to us. How pleased she will be. After this, I was driven every day for a week or so, and I appeared to be quite safe. Miss Lavina at last ventured out in the small closed carriage. After this, it was quite decided to keep me and call me by my old name of Black Beauty. I have now lived in this happy place a whole year. Joe is the best and kindest of grooms. My work is easy and pleasant, and I feel my strength and spirits all coming back again. Mr. Thoroughgood said to Joe the other day, in your place, he will last until he is 20 years old, perhaps more. Willie always speaks to me when he can, and he treats me as his special friend. My ladies have promised that I shall never be sold, and I have nothing to fear, and here my story ends. My troubles are all over, and I am at home, and often, before I'm quite awake, I fancy I'm still at the orchard at Burtwick, standing with my old friends under the apple trees. That had a happy ending, and there is Black Beauty. We hope you enjoyed this read aloud of Annisville's Black Beauty.